Okay, we're going to take on an algebra word problem in this video. And I know that's everyone's favorite topic. You're just always thinking about algebra word problems. But uh, in actuality, most students, when they uh, hear about an algebra word problem, they look like this. Their, their expression is, no, oh, no, anything but an algebra word problem, you know, let alone algebra. Well, you know, maybe not you. Maybe you're like, I love uh, word problems. Give me more. Well, listen. Um, word problems are, are nothing more than an application of the skills that you're learning in algebra. And the one that we're going to be uh, looking at in this video is called a mixture word problem. And it's uh, pretty typical. Uh, the, if you are new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider uh, subscribing. But I uh, do many videos on algebra word problems, different type of word problems. But if you understand one type of word problem, like a mixture problem, then you'll uh, have a good idea to do all mixture problems. And it's uh, in algebra, you kind of have like the classic type of word problems that you see all the time. So like motion or rate and distance problems are very, very common. So if you know how to do one, you should you have a pretty good understanding to do uh, other types of problems uh, in this particular category. Number problems um, are pretty common. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of different types of uh, problems. Well, not a lot. Maybe like a, just a handful are the most common type of algebra word problems. But this particular one here, a uh, mixture word problem, is one of those kind of classic uh, type of category of algebra word problems that are, are pretty common. Okay, so hopefully I'm being um, clear here because if you understand this mixture uh, word problem, uh, then you should be able to handle other uh, mixture word problems. I guess maybe that's the point I am trying to make, but we're obviously going to get into this and I'm going to go over um, kind of a general uh, procedure that you want to be thinking about anytime you encounter an algebra word problem. So we don't have this situation. We are like, uh, okay, you know, you're basically determined. You're like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to solve this word problem. I know exactly what to do. And uh, of course, you know, uh, we're going to get into solving this particular one here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, you can check out my math help program by following uh, the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here very shortly. I'm really excited about that. But um, I have a lot of courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, the ACUPLACE or ALEX, CLEP exam, uh, nursing entrance exam, there's a ton of exams out there that people have to take uh, that are very important uh, in terms of the goals they're trying to reach. And these exams have a pretty good amount of math on them. If you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well on the exam. So we don't want that to happen. So uh, just go to my website. You can check out my full course catalog. Uh, I should have your exam that you're studying for. If I do not, uh, go ahead and drop me a line and it will help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with uh, independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously help those of you that are, uh, you know, having a tough time in your current math courses. But uh, the one thing that I cannot do for you that you, uh, if you're really serious about uh, being great in math or doing well in mathematics, and that is this, you got to take great math notes. Okay, so over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me that those students who really do have great, great notes, really been concentrating, writing things down, paying attention, well, guess what? It's, it's kind of obvious or common sense that these people uh, always do well on their tests and in their grades. And then the reverse is true. Those students are like, yeah, I don't need to take notes or I take notes once a month or my best friend in my uh, math class, they, they take notes for me uh, because I like to, you know, look at my cell phone, do my homework for my other class. And I got to catch up talking to my best friend in class. Listen, I get it. I was a student once and I made all these mistakes except for the cell phone because uh, I went to school in the 1980s. But, uh, you know, believe me, uh, we were completely distracted back then as well. And that's the thing. You got to eliminate distractions. You got to focus. Focus is the key to learning. And if you're trying to learn math, 
you got to learn how to focus, okay? So work on your note taking, but in the meantime, uh, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, let's check out this word problem and uh, I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. But first, let's quickly read it. Okay, so it says, how many ounces of 5% hydrochloric acid and 20% of hydrochloric acid must be combined, okay, we're gonna create some sort of mixture, to get 10 ounces of a solution that is 12.5% of uh, hydrochloric acid. All right, so this is the problem we're gonna tackle. But before we get into the specifics of this problem, let's just review, in general, any algebra word problem. Okay, so what's the first thing you wanna do? Well, you want to read the problem. Now, some of you are, uh, if you haven't seen any of my other videos on algebra word problems, you're probably saying, okay, Mr. YouTube math teacher, uh, that's pretty obvious. I need <laughs> help me more than just saying read the problem. No, what I'm talking about, you got to read the problem like five times. You just can't read the problem once and then do the, do the problem. So you got to already be prepared to be like, I got to read the problem. I got to reread the problem. I got to read the problem again. I got to like look for information multiple times scanning through the problem. Okay, so this is what I'm getting at. So just don't feel like you can read the problem once. Go, okay, I get, I get it and just start. So read, think, go back to uh, what the question is asking. This is very, very important. Okay, so what's the second thing? Well, the second thing is to try to create some sort of model of the information in the problem, all right? This can be some sort of sketch, all right? Like let's say it's a, uh, a motion problem. Uh, let's say you have like a car, it's leaving here, it's going this particular distance. These are examples of models. So you can kind of figure things out. Other examples are creating tables, okay? These are excellent as well. As a matter of fact, we're gonna be using a table in this particular problem. And um, so, Anything that helps organize information so you can kind of see the solution, all right? And uh, now, once you have uh, some sort of model there, and this could be different for different students, all right? There's not just one way of modeling, but it's just a way to organize uh, visually, okay, or graphically the information in the problem. Now, the next thing you want to do is to assign uh, your variables, variable or variables, depending on the kind of problem. So in other words, we're going to say, okay, we're going to let X is equal to something, all right? Now, it might be X or it might be Y as well, or Z. It all depends on the type of problem, but we have to, um, you know, we are talking about algebra here, so there's going to be variables involved. So we want to assign uh, some variables, and uh, this model that you're creating is going to help you uh, determine, okay, what's going on? And obviously, as you read the problem, it's going to help you um, identify what your variables should be uh, equal to, okay, what they should represent. All right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to build yourself an equation, all right? We are talking about algebra, so we do have some variables, but we're going to have to end up solving for these variables, and the only way we're going to be able to do that is to build an equation. Now, how do we build an equation? Well, uh, we go back to this model. We look for relationships uh, that we can equate, okay, and build some sort of equation or equations uh, so we can actually solve for these variables. And then that would be the next step. Once we build the equation, we'll actually do the algebra and solve the equation. Now, a lot of students think that once they're done solving the equation, they're done. They're, they're like, okay, I'm done with the problem, da 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 da, da. No, you, you got to do this last step, and actually, again, you got to read the problem again and make sure you are you answer the specific question because oftentimes when you solve uh, your equation over here, you, you may have to take an additional step to answer the specific question in the problem. So, you know, double and triple check. That's why I say you got to read uh, the problem, you know, carefully multiple times during the course of this. But this is a, a good general guideline for you to handle these algebra word problems. And um, again, if you have the skills, you know, solving equations and everything else, then you should be able to end up with a nice little happy face at the end of these prompts. Now, if you think you're like, okay, I think I could do this. If you want to give this problem a try, I'll scroll up here and you can uh, kind of go over this procedure, pause the video, and maybe give this uh, thing a whirl. Okay, I think that's the best way to approach my videos or any uh, prom. You know, before you see the solution, give it a shot, see what you know or don't know. Okay. All right, with that being said, let's get into the solution. 
All right, so what's going on again, right? Well, so let's just, you know, again, we we're reading it. So we're saying how many ounces we got of a five, we got a 5% hydrochloric acid. All right, that's like one container. And we have 20% of hydrochloric acid. So think about it. So you got like two solutions here, right? Here's like the 5% and we got the 20%. And we don't know how many ounces though, but we want to combine these two together, right? Uh, to get uh, to give us 10 ounces of a 12.5% uh, solution. Okay, now what it means to have 5% means like here, that 5% of this little jar, for example, would be hydrochloric acid. That's what that is talking about. And over here, 20% of this one. So we're talking about combining two, you know, jars, if you will. Think of it, you know, visually that way. Uh, when we combine these, we want to get uh, one that's obviously the 5%. Um, is going to become stronger if you add 20% to it. And if you add 5% to the 20%, that's going to dilute that down. So we should be able to get a 12.5% solution of hydrochloric acid. But, you know, how much of these two things uh, must, uh, must me, I can't even speak here, um, must we add? There you go. See, we slow things down. I can get the words out. All right. But so let's go ahead and um, read the question again one more time, just to make sure in fact, this is the scenario. Okay, so how many ounces of 5% uh, hydrochloric acid and 20% hydrochloric acid must be combined to get 10 ounces of a solution that is 12.5% hydrochloric acid? So when we combine these two guys together, what we're looking for is a final little jar here of 10 ounces, okay, at 12.5% hydrochloric acid, all right? This is what we're going for. Now, I know this is 5%, this one, okay? And I know this is 20%, but I don't have the ounces. I don't know how many ounces. That's what the question is I'm asking, right? How many ounces of this one and how many ounces of this one? So we're talking about two uh, different variables, two different unknowns. Okay. I'm trying to find the ounces of the 5% and how many ounces of the 20%. So we're going to need two variables here. And anytime in algebra, you have two separate variables involved, uh, that you need to be thinking about, uh, systems of equations systems. Okay. So this is in fact a system word prom. And, uh, if you, uh, kind of like, we were able to figure that out before we even got into this. Well, then that's excellent. Okay. All right. So um, let's go ahead and assign our variables. And I got a model here, a table here, but um, even this little kind of, you know, uh, writing out this little scribble scratch, this little jars, any kind of visual thing that kind of helps you understand what's going on, that is a, uh, a model, okay? You could have done this differently. You could have made a made this neater, but I'm kind of working in these little areas. But now let's go ahead and assign our, our variables. So how about we let X equal to the number of ounces we need of this 5% solution, okay, so in order to create this 12.5%, we're gonna uh, let X equal the number of ounces of the 5% solution we're gonna need, and then we'll let Y, okay, equal the number of ounces of the 20% solution. Okay, so let's let our variables um, uh, represent the number of ounces of each type because that's in fact what the question is asking. How many ounces of the 5%? Okay, well, let's let a variable represent that and how many ounces of the 20%. So let's let a variable represent that. And that's um, um, really important in algebra and algebra word problems is you should let your variables rep obviously represent the unknown in the problem, okay? All right, so now with mixture problems, it's very, very uh, typical uh, to build a table. Always keep a table um, in mind in terms of algebra word problems. They come in super handy. And uh, let's just review again. X is the number of ounces of the 5% solution, and Y is the number of ounces of the 20% solution. Now let's go to this table. So uh, now this takes practice. And again, uh, what I'm getting at in the beginning of the video is if you know how to solve one type of mixture problem, then you can kind of use the same technique, the same strategy, and other type of uh, mixture problems. Okay, so let's take a look at how you would want to organize uh, this table. So the first thing I have here is the kind of solution. Well, what kind of solutions are we dealing with? Well, we got a 5% solution. We have a 20% solution, okay? And then obviously we're gonna end up with a 12.5% solution. Now, 
uh, ounces of the solution, okay? Well, I don't know how many ounces of 5% uh, solution. That's part of the question, right? I don't know how many ounces of this 5% solution that we're going to need, okay? But we're going to figure that out. So that's our variable X. How many ounces of the 20% solution? Well, that's our variable Y, okay? And then how many ounces of this 12.5% uh, solution? Well, we know that we want 10 ounces, okay? So that's why we have a 10 in there. All right, now how many ounces of acid? Now remember, the solution is the entire like jar, okay? So right down here, if this is, this right here would be like say 12, 0.5%. It's not the entire, this is this whole thing is the solution. This is the amount of acid in it, okay? So um, let's take a look at this first one. So if I have a 5% solution, okay, how many, whatever ounces I have uh, of it, the total solution, how many ounces of acid? Well, which is multiply 5% by that solution, okay, the total ounces, and I would get that. So of course, I'm going to turn 5% uh, into a decimal. So 0 0.05 times this um, number of ounces of solution would be the amount of acid I would have in that uh, solution. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. So uh, here, that's 0.05x. And then over here, this 20% uh, sol uh, solution, okay, 20% acid, how many ounces of acid in that solution? Well, it would be 0.20, okay, 20% of the number of ounces of that total solution, which is Y ounces. So that's 0 0.220Y. Uh, and then here, uh, how many um, ounces of acid do I have in this 12.5% solution? If I have 10 ounces, well, I'm just gonna take this 12.5%, convert it to a decimal, that's 0.125, uh, multiplied by 10. That's exactly how many ounces of acid I have, okay? All right. now. I'm pretty much organizing everything I know about the situation in this table. Now, the next step here, okay, is that we need to build some equations. And because we're dealing with two different variables here, X and Y, you're going to need two equations. You just like it. You can't just have one equation. Uh, we're going to need two equations because we have two variables. Again, we're going to be dealing with a system. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, some relationships that we know. All right, well... Here, the first one is x plus y is equal to 10. Well, if I'm going to take some uh, this 5% solution and I'm going to add it to the ounces of this 20% solution, well, I know the total, when I get done with this, I'm going to end up with 10 ounces. Okay, so that's what I know. I need to um, add some amount of the 5% and some amount of the 20%, but when I add these together, guess what? You're gonna get 10, right? So that's one uh, equation, and hopefully you were able uh, to see that. All right, now how about the acid? Well, the acid's the same thing, okay? Um, this amount of acid that uh, we have in the 5% that we're gonna be adding, okay, with this ounces of solution, uh, plus this amount of acid, from the 20% is gonna, uh, in total, end up to be this uh, total amount of acid right here. So we can basically use the same idea, and this is the amount of acid uh, in the 5% solution uh, that we're gonna be adding. This is the amount of acid in the 20% solution, but we'll end up with this amount right here. That'd be the 12.5% per percent um, of that 10 ounces in that final solution. So if you're kind of a little bit confused, make sure, you know, go back and review, think about it. Um, again, mixture problems, in fact, are a little bit confusing. All right. So if you're a little bit confused, that's kind of normal, but you're going to encounter mixture problems in algebra. I can assure you. All right. All right. So now if you got your bearings, uh, what we have to do is now solve this system. Okay. So what's going on here? We have two equations and two variables, x and y, x and y. So this is a system, all right? So now you need to know how to solve linear systems, and we're talking about the substitution method, the linear combination method, elimination method, etc. all that kind of good stuff. All right, now let's get right uh, to it. And the first thing, uh, let's just focus now on this problem as a system. So we have x plus y is equal to 10, 0.05x plus 0.20y. Uh, 0.20 times y is equal to 1 point, uh, point 
one, two, five times 10. Hopefully I'm not misspeaking here. And now we can just concentrate on the system. So the first thing is, you know, we see these decimals and they're kind of bugging us, right? So you're like, you know what? Let's just get rid of these uh, decimals. So how can I get rid of these decimals? What can help us out? Well, let's just multiply this entire equation by 100. Now, when you're dealing with systems, you can um, you can do this. You're allowed to, uh, to multiply the, an entire uh, equation by the same number. As long as you multiply both the left and right hand side, you're not going to break it. You're just going to make it look different, right? And what I want to do is just get away from the decimals and work with a nice uh, integer whole uh, numbers if we can. So if we multiply by 100, I know I'm going to be able to uh, get rid of these guys right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just making this problem easier, right? Uh, you could work, you could use the decimals and work with them, but you know, we try to work smarter and not harder. All right, so this what um, is the consequences of multiplying by 100 when I multiply this line in the system or that uh, particular equation by 100, you get this, okay? And I much rather work with this than the decimals. Okay, so at this point you have your choices, whether you want to use the substitution method or the elimination method. In other words, you could solve for X or Y. And, uh, you know, for those of you that want to just kind of practice your systems right now and want to try a different technique than what I'm doing, then that's perfectly fine. Actually, I encourage you to do that. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the elimination and combination method. Now, if you're uh, struggling with any of this stuff, uh, just check out uh, my videos in my algebra uh, playlist on systems. I cover uh, systems pretty thoroughly, but if you really want to master this, you definitely, you know, uh, I would suggest like my algebra one course and really, really get, get into this stuff pretty deeply. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this top equation by a negative five because if I can get a negative five right here, okay, then I can eliminate these x variables. Again, I don't want to digress too much and turn this into a whole lesson on systems. Okay, make sure you know how to solve systems. So, but I am kind of explaining this. So I want a negative five right there. So I'm gonna multiply this entire top equation by negative five. And again, I could do that, but I gotta multiply everything by negative five. So what does that look like? Okay, well, I'll end up with a negative five X there, a negative five Y there, and then this 10 turns into negative 50. Now, I can uh, go ahead and uh, do this elimination or combination method. I'm going to add down in a column manner. And when I do that, these guys go away. And that's exactly what I wanted. Okay. And negative 5 plus 20y, positive 20y, is 15y. And negative 50 plus 125 is 75. And now I could solve for uh, a y by dividing both sides of the equation by 15. And I get y is equal to 5. Okay, so we're almost there, and now I need to go get uh, x, right? So I have y, so we have two variables. So we can use any equation that we had in the system, okay? So I'll use this one, x plus y uh, is equal to 10 to solve uh, for x. Now that I know that y is equal to 5, I could just replace this y with this 5, okay, to solve for x, and that's what I'm going to do right here. So I have x plus 5 is equal to 10, and of course, when you solve that, Nice, lovely equation. You get x is equal to 5. All right, so we are done solving the equation. x is uh, equal to 5, and y is also equal to 5. But what does this represent? Well, remember, x and y represented the amount of uh, solution, the ounces of solution that we need to make this 12.5% uh, uh, acid solution at 10 ounces. So effectively, we're going to need 5 ounces of the 5% solution combined with five ounces, right? This is our X and Y of the 20% solution. That's what's required to get 10 ounces of a 12.5% acid solution, okay? And uh, if you were able to do this problem all on your own without any assistance, I must give you a big smiley face, a gigantic mohawk, an A plus, a 100%. And matter of fact, I think I'm gonna give you like four stars because uh, mixture problems are a little bit confusing and uh, typically give a lot of students um, trouble. But if you got this all right on your own, uh, that's pretty awesome. Matter of fact, I if I was your teacher, I would just say, just take the textbook home and I'll see you next year. Uh, you're probably watching that guy on YouTube. That's why you're doing so well in your math course. But listen, um, 
in all seriousness, no, in all seriousness, if you did, uh, you know, get this right, you know, that's very, very good. But uh, listen, algebra word problems is just, you know, they're part of algebra. Okay, so don't shy away from them. Uh, you got to embrace them. Okay, and the way you embrace them is by practicing this stuff. All right? There's no other way to learn anything other than actually, you know, uh, doing the work and practicing. So I would encourage you to practice more word problems. If you go into my um, pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my YouTube channel, you'll find several other videos, other word problem videos that I really uh, highly encourage you uh, to uh, check out, okay, if you want to get better at algebra word problems. But hopefully, this particular video you found uh, interesting and helpful. And if that's the case, please consider this uh, smashing that like button. That helps me out. And again, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I have over a thousand videos on my channel. Um, you know, my goal, my mission, what I strive for is to try to make math clear and understandable. Nobody should be failing math these days, but you got to do your part. You got to work hard, take notes, talk to your math teacher, you know, uh, you know, take that initiative. But if you need more um, help outside of your class, well, then you know, please, you know, watch if you like my teaching style, uh, you know, check out all my videos, watch other people's videos. But if you want my best math help, you'll always find that in my math help program. OK, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.